Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Thomas and Friends Home Media Reviews. This review is on Thomas and the Runaway Kite. I tried to do my best Michael Brandon impression there. It really didn't come off as that, did it? So let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and jump right into the history section of Thomas and the Runaway Kite. <laughs> So Thomas and the Runaway Kite was released theatrically in January of 2010 and then was put out onto DVD in March of 2010. I'm still not quite sure if I believe that it was ever put out theatrically, probably just specialty theaters, but who knows? It could have happened. There could have been Thomas fans who were at that screening. I was not one of those Thomas fans. I was 10. Don't give me that look. Anyway, I think this might be where I'm getting the idea that I picked up Splish Splash Splush in March. Because Thomas and the Runaway Kite came out in March, and I'm pretty sure I picked up Thomas and the Runaway Kite release month. So that might be where I'm getting that from. Possibly some false memories, possibly some fake news thrown in there. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right into the close-up section of Thomas and the Runaway Kite. Alrighty, everyone, here's your close-up look at Thomas and the Runaway Kite. Now, you're already realizing this, I'm sure, but this DVD does not have a slipcover. Um, our last two regular HMRs had slipcovers on their releases. I'm not sure if this one originally came with, with a slipcover. I'm assuming not, because I bought this in 2010 whenever it first came out, and it didn't have a slipcover. So, I'm guessing it didn't have a slipcover whenever it first came out. Don't quote me on that. It might. I'm not sure, but... I personally have never seen a copy with a slipcover. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at it here. In full steam CGI animation, we mentioned this back in Splish Splash Splash that they're still advertising that it's in CGI animation. Below that, we've got Thomas and the Runaway Kite with the Thomas and Friends logo up there. We've got Thomas and ugh, Charlie on the front. Does Charlie really bring in the sales? Hit or Lionsgate or whoever makes these freaking covers. Does Charlie bring in the sales? No, everybody hates Charlie. Except kids with really low brain cells. Hit Entertainment on the side. Scroll on down. Thomas and the Runaway Kite. Thomas down there. Self-portrait. And there's a kite right there. Self-promotion. I guess or not self-promotion. I guess it's just promotion for the DVD. It is called Thomas and the Runaway Kite. On the back here. Full steam ahead for... For high-flying fun, I almost said something worse than flying. Um, we've got a blurb there about what's on our disc and the summary. UPC code up there. Don't really know why I mentioned that. There's Thomas on the back with a kite next to him that has the bonus features on it. How many shapes do you see and what doesn't belong? And then down here we have our legalese information, copyright stuff, and all that jazz. There's the back again. Let's open this up. Still don't know if it came with anything. If it did, then I'm sorry I threw it out. But if it didn't, then hey, I didn't throw anything out. And as I've said in the previous two regular HMRs, that means I'm not a bad person. Here's our disc, and it is a full squished up version of the entire poster art. It's not just a section now, except it should be just a section because the disc includes Charlie. Mm. Charlie really triggers me, in case you're wondering. So that, ladies and gents, is your... Close-up look at Thomas and the Runaway Kite. Let's go ahead and transition into our menu tour. Alrighty, everyone, here we are for our menu tour for Thomas and the Runaway Kite. And as you can see, it's that standard CGI style of menu where it's one background. Usually it's the same background as on the DVD. In this case, it's the same thing with Thomas and Charlie there. We've got play, episode selection, language selection, and bonus features. Episode selection, what episodes are on here? I forget. Thomas and the Runaway Kite, the biggest present of all, Toby's new whistle, and Buzzy Bees. All of these episodes are terrible. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. They all suck so bad. Language selection, I, I bet you money. It's, yep, English, Spanish, and French. I bet you money for that. I don't know how much, but you owe me some sort of money if you are watching this. Bonus features, what do we got? What do we got? How many shapes do you see and find what doesn't belong? We also have trailers. So anyway, guys, that's the end of the Thomas and the Runaway Kite menu tour. It's extremely short, but that's the case with most of these CGI 
releases, especially in the early season 13 days. There aren't a lot of bonus features or any that are particularly interesting to look at. So these menu tours are going to be are going to get just a little shorter. So with that out of the, the, the way, let's go ahead and head on back and we'll answer the five main questions as always. All right, everybody. Now we're back from the close up and now it's time to answer the five main questions as always. Number one, where can you pick this product up? I'm not sure if I even need to answer that. Online retailers. I remember this one being on Netflix as well. So if it's not, then I'm sorry for being fake news, but it was back in 2016 when I last checked. Side note, not recording this in 2016, recording this in 2017. I just haven't looked for Thomas content since December of 2016. Number two, is this product still being printed nowadays? No. Number three, should you pick this product up? Like Splish Splash Splosh, I have a weird nostalgic factor for Thomas and the Runaway Kite. Thomas and the Runaway Kite was my third exposure to Thomas and Friends CGI, and young Lego lover thought, this is exactly like Splish Splash Splosh, and I really don't like it that much. I probably only watched Runaway Kite twice in my childhood. Meanwhile, I watched Splish Splash Splosh maybe three times before I finally gave up on it. However, older Lego lover thinks that Thomas and the Runaway Kite isn't too awful. It's kind of in the same space as Splish Splash Splosh in how it's not horrible. It's actually somewhat watchable. Because let's be honest, season 13 isn't the pits. Season 13 is watchable at times and unwatchable at other times. It's not like seasons 14 and 15, which are god-awful and nobody should ever have to endure those travesties. I am going to have to because I watch everything before I review it for HMR. But season 13 really isn't the pits of the CGI series. It's actually... Not horrible. It's kind of like season 7, as in it's a transitional season, and how it's sort of bad, but also sort of good. Pretty much all four of these episodes on here, they're all kind of meh. I don't really I don't really particularly care for the biggest present of all, and the fact that it brings Hero back on Sodor when he was so emotionally excited to go back to his homeland, and then it seems like two weeks later he's like, Hey guys, my homeland freaking sucks, I'm coming back to Sodor, guys. Nowadays, it seems like the modern CGI era has fixed that, making it uh, to where Hero works primarily on the mainland, is is owned by some, like, mainland railway, and only comes on Sodor for special occasions and stuff like that, which I like. However, I do wish that they would have stuck with the idea that they set up in Hero of the Rails and just let Hero go home. Maybe bring him back in, like, season 14 or something, and have him be, like, Gator-type character where he comes back for a while and then he leaves again off screen and we don't ever see him again because that's what gator did the other three episodes on here i'd say the title story is the worst thomas and the runaway kite it's not particularly great buzzy bees aside from being a title that i can barely say with without stuttering it's not a very good episode for one thing it features hero which i say i like hero and hero of the rails but i wish he would have stayed away so that episode already has a stain on it in my eyes. And Thomas is just an idiot. But honestly, I have a weird nostalgic factor for Thomas and the Runaway Kite. Unfortunately, this time around, I can't recommend Thomas and the Runaway Kite on that nostalgia factor like I did to Splish Splash Blosh. Because I just don't feel a lot for Thomas and the Runaway Kite. It's just not as nostalgic as Splish Splash Blosh, nor is it as good. I can't believe I'm saying Splish Splash Splash is good, but it's it's just not as good. Number four, where should you pick this product up? Same answers as number one. And number five, what price should you pay? Well, as far as I know, Thomas and the Runaway Kite never had a slip cover, so five to ten bucks. That, ladies and gentlemen, concludes the HMR for Thomas and the Runaway Kite. We've had three regular HMRs that are all CGI. Guess what's next week? The greatest stories. We jump back to the friggin' classic series. Wow, isn't that great? But it actually kind of makes sense because the greatest stories was released in 2010. That was Thomas's 65th anniversary, I think. Yeah, 65th. So Hit Entertainment was like, hey guys, let's make a compilation of the so-called greatest stories, but some of the stories aren't really that great. In fact, some of them suck balls, but other ones are actually really good, but it's just a random assortment of stories. And what the hell were we even thinking? That was my impression of a hit entertainment executive after 
The Greatest Stories was put out. I think it's accurate. I'm not sure about you all. So anyway, The Greatest Stories, next regular HMR. I'll see y'all then. Good night, everybody.